I know that uh, this fear that inflation at 7%, uh, which is the CPI right now, on a year-over-year basis, uh, is getting embedded into the system because wages are rising and so forth. Uh, and what, what we're seeing on the monetary and fiscal front right now is effectively significant tightening already uh, on the monetary front. We've seen uh, money growth go from 27% at its peak during the coronavirus, the depths of the coronavirus, uh, to 13% recently. But if you look at it um, a little more closely uh, and at a, in a shorter term time uh, horizon, we're down to 8% growth uh, on a three month basis, 6.5% on a two-month basis, and uh, we, we believe that uh, money growth will continue to slow quite significantly, especially if the Fed does raise interest rates. Now, we wouldn't be surprised to see the interest rates go up in March. Uh, many people after today's employment report uh, are beginning to think that 50 basis points is the number that the Fed will basically telegraph that it means business and that it's going to head inflation off at the pass. They may do that. Uh, and uh, if they do, however, we think the stars are aligning in in such a way that they will get the message very quickly that they don't need to do much more. On the innovation front and on uh, market indicators, uh, crypto, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ether, uh, they, they have corrected uh, with the equity markets. More and more hedge funds are involved in them. So when the market corrects, we do see higher correlations these days, although uh, over a full market cycle, uh, the correlation uh, the correlation between crypto assets and any other asset is extremely low, um, uh, which, mean, which means for diversification purposes, uh, crypto is a very interesting asset. In our Big Ideas uh, 2022, you will see uh, how we break out crypto. Our understanding is evolving and uh, we are are able to describe it in three ways, a money revolution, a financial revolution, and a uh, next generation internet or metaverse uh, revolution. What we are also focused on is that uh, loss of purchasing power is feeding through to retail sales. So retail sales in the all important um, uh, December month, uh, we're down 1.9% on the heels of a 0.2% uh, increase in November. With inflation at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6%, uh, those numbers, that retail sales number would, in real terms, taking inflation away, have been down two and a half percent and in November also down. Uh, so consumption is falling. We were also focusing on what uh, companies like Facebook and Amazon are saying. Now, Amazon's sales, Amazon reported yesterday, its sales on a year over year basis were up only 9%. Now, it was up against a very tough comparison. Um, and I think on a two year basis, we've still got uh, solid growth, but still 9% is even lower than the lowest point during uh, the 08, 09 crisis, which was 14.5%. Uh, true, Amazon is a little bit more mature of a company right now, but 9% I've never seen out of, out of Amazon. And the it was facing tough comparisons in uh, the quarters prior to now, and we saw nothing like that 9%. Facebook is, um, is suggesting that for many reasons, its sales growth in this quarter will be somewhere in the three to 11% range. This is the lowest ever. It's never been in single digits. Uh, so uh, Facebook uh, has, we think, some competitive problems, uh, but it did point uh, to weakness in the retail sector, uh, as did Google in, in its report. 
Uh, so consumption accounts for roughly two thirds, a little more than two thirds of the U.S. economy. Uh, retail sales are mostly on the good side. So that's about a third of total consumption. The rest is services. So we look to the consumer sentiment surveys to give us a sense of where we're going from here. And if uh, we did get another uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment survey and it fell again uh, to, a, to a new low uh, and uh, it's lower than at any time during nine, uh, to 2020 during the coronavirus crisis. And, um, and it is heading for lows that we haven't seen since the 0809 crisis. So the consumer is, doesn't like this loss of purchasing power. Uh, we know that the employment rate, uh, unemployment rate and the employment rate are working in the consumer's favor generally. Uh, but, and, and that usually is a prime to, Determinant of how the consumer is feeling, uh, but it's clear loss of purchasing power is top of mind. So let's go to market indicators now. Uh, equities, as you know, they were moving toward, they did move to an all time high, but the internals of the market last year were not good. They were, uh, uh, I think I mentioned on the last um, uh, in the know that the ratio of new lows to new highs was as high as it's been since 1999. Uh, and in 1999, it was the value stocks that were hitting new lows as everyone was racing into the internet. In, uh, in this last year, it has been our kinds of stocks that were hitting new lows as value stocks were hitting all time highs. Uh, and as you know, the right thing to have done during uh, the late 90s when that ratio uh, behaved that way was to move away from the new highs into the new lows. And I think the same is true today. And I'll just give you, a, 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 I guess, a, a sneak preview of what may happen here. You know, I was very interested after Ford said that the demand for its F-150 uh, Lightning EV uh, was so much stronger than, than it expected, its stock exploded. Uh, now, I want our auto manufacturers to be very successful in the EV space, um, but to see its stock jump to highs that it had not seen since 2000 is a sense of what I just said. Uh, what, what, what that move said to me is, oh my goodness, investors don't understand that 97 to 98% of its sales base is gas powered cars. And we believe that the shift toward electric is accelerating here. Oil prices being one reason, but also lower lower prices being another as battery costs come down. So I uh, I found uh, that very interesting in the context of um, the juxtaposition of the late 90s uh, against today.